years ago. Tonight, we take pride in demonstrating for the first time the phenomenal discovery of the time window. The time window was developed by an obscure network vice president who was dozing one night before his television set and inadvertently short-circuited his remote control switch by dropping it into a plate of 100-year-old turtle soup. And to his amazement, this gentleman found himself watching a Civil War movie with the original cast, an event that occurred exactly 100 years ago. Well, tonight, through the miracle of the time window, we present the first in our new gallery of television portraits of colorful geniuses and historic figures of a century ago. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you gaze into the time window, we take you to the home of the eminent Hungarian composer Franz Liszt. And in so doing, we set television back 100 years. <laughs> are you there, Mr. Liszt? Mr. Liszt, are you there? <laughs> I certainly are, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> and how are you, Mr. Wallace? I'm fine, thank you. And how do you feel, Mr. Liz? Oh, I feel wonderful because Anderson doesn't upset my stomach. <laughs> We've been admiring your splendid home, all the stately chambers, mammoth furnishings. And I was most impressed with your beautiful formal garden. I noticed the geraniums coming up the front walk. Are those darn geraniums coming up the front walk again? <laughs> Mr. Liz. Yes. Would you please tell us just a little bit about your exquisite home? For instance, the interesting pictures on the wall over there? Oh, yes, I'm glad you asked that, Mr. Wallace. This is what I call my composer's corner. These are the composers of my most favorite uh, compositions, I may say. There I am, six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, ten years from now. <laughs> Mr. List, is, uh, is that a piece of music you have framed there on the wall? No, that is a piece of music I have framed there on the wall. <laughs> uh, this happens to be my first composition. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is not a very impressive composition, but it is a very important composition. May I play it for you, Mr. Please, Wallace? Please. I told you it was not very impressive, but it is important. Here it is. Yeah. Well, I told you. But it is very important because if we hadn't written this, we would never have had this. I, I understand. <laughs> Mr. List, while you have uh, conquered the world with your pianism, to say nothing of your composing, to whom do you feel that you owe all your success? My mother. <laughs> she was a very, very lovely woman. Even her name was lovely. Christmas was her name. <laughs> Christmas list. <laughs> With your permission, sir, I, I wonder if I may change the subject. Everyone is interested in the, uh, in the amours of a great artist. Oh. And it's common knowledge that you have known many women in your lifetime. Now, without going into details, of course, would you care to comment on your relationship with the fair sex? <laughs> Mr. Waters, <laughs> which, which one is that? <laughs> the fair... <laughs> the women, you mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Waters, I have been chased by beautiful women in every country. The terrible price the artist has to pay for the art. <laughs> I've played all over the world. Piano, of course. <laughs> Is the lady whom I see in the love seat beside you uh, Mrs. List by any chance? The lady you see beside me in the love seat is not Mrs. List, and she hasn't got a chance. <laughs> Uh, let's just say that she's an old friend and dropped the subject. <laughs> I keep her here for balance. <laughs> Franz Liszt, have you ever thought of writing an opera? No, frankly, I haven't. But I met 
Joe Green yesterday on the street, and this is very interesting. Joe Green? Yes, Joe Green. Oh, you mean, you mean Giuseppe Verdi? Oh, that's his stage name. <laughs> <laughs> we met, and he suggested something about Aida. I don't even know her. No, I wasn't interested in anything like that. Well, you might be interested to know, Mr. List, that uh, there is now a movie in our country based on your life. Is that so? Yeah. What's the name of that? Uh, it's called Song Without End. It covers your entire brilliant career. And you certainly did have a brilliant career. Yes, except for that very, very bad year, 1887. Well, what happened in 1887? I died. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear That's that. That's life. Mm. <laughs> but you certainly did have a brilliant life. All, all of those triumphs. <laughs> As the flower of the musical oh, world, so, Mr. So. List, with all of that adulation, I'm amazed that your success hasn't gone to your head. Well, I'll tell you... <laughs> Excuse me just a second. I'm a chain sniffer. <laughs> Mr. Wallace, I have in my youth, been very conceited. As a matter of fact, I was always very conceited. That has all changed now. Now I'm perfect. <laughs> yes. And it's surprising how you still manage to retain your modesty, sir. <coughs> you, uh, you played for royalty many times, did you not, Mr. List? Yes, I did. But, uh, oh, kings, queens, jacks, <laughs> count, countesses and so forth. They seem to... Well, they don't understand my music. But the food is good. <laughs> well, if they don't understand your music, why do you play for Royal? Because I get five extra points when I take a civil service examination. <laughs> <laughs> what is your unbiased opinion, sir, about your contemporary composers? Have you, for instance, heard Johann Strauss' Tales of the Vienna Woods? No, but I heard a cute one about a musician's daughter. Uh, <laughs> something like that. Uh, what do you think of Brahms? <laughs> Who? Johannes Brahms. Oh, Joe Brahms? <laughs> the fellow from, uh, from Hamburg? <laughs> he writes for babies. <laughs> what do you expect from a hamburger? <laughs> Chopin? Well... He used to be a good friend of mine, but he got in with a bad crowd. <laughs> he was running around with this woman. What was her name? Uh, uh, what was her name? George? <laughs> Are you trying to be funny, maybe? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but her name was George. <laughs> You're sick! <laughs> George Sand. George Sand. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, I apologize, of course. The one who smoked my cigar. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. No, the only thing he wrote that ever came in handy was the minute walls. Because I happen to use it every morning. Before breakfast, I push my piano out in the kitchen, and then I play the minute walls three times, and my eggs are done. <laughs> well, I, uh... I think, sir, that perhaps you're losing interest in this turn in the conversation. Perhaps we'd better go back to talking about you. Now you're wising up. <laughs> Mr. List, I know that our audience would never forgive me if I didn't ask you to play something before we leave you. Would you do us that honor? Well, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> I would be delighted, Mr. Wallace. You probably know where my Hungarian rhapsodies, number one, number three, four, five, six. Uh, well, I just wrote the second one. Number two. <laughs> a little behind with that one, but nevertheless, I should play that for you, maybe. Will you play us a little of it? No. Nope. I'll play it all. <laughs> Mr. Wallace, isn't this a gorgeous hand? <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. There's another one like it. <laughs> Who these fingers has the most beautiful music walked in the world. Walked. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot play this one alone. It was written for four hands, because that way we could through with it a little faster. <laughs> but my prize pupil, Mr. Leonid Hambro, is waiting in the waiting room. <laughs> so maybe I should call him in and he will help me out. I am sure he will be delighted. Mr. Hambro, would you please come in? My prize pupil, Mr. Hambro. <laughs> The second, the lousy one, you know. 